The United States has plenty of political parties. We technically have over 50. Not one for every state, though. That would be absolutely absurd. We've, we'll focus on those later. The main two parties that you've probably heard of before if you've listened to this podcast since the beginning or have looked into United States politics in any way, shape, or form. They are the Republican and Democratic parties. Seeing as it is New Year's Eve and we have an election year coming up, join me today as we explore the history of the parties and the different values that they focus on. I'm Hendrick, and you're listening to Right Side of the Road. Before we move further, I hope that everyone had a tremendous Christmas and got to spend a lot of time with your family, and that you did not let COVID get in the way of spending time with your family like the left wanted you to in my last video. Go check that out if you haven't already. Another quick note, I realized last week that Google puts up a COVID information box under some of my videos on YouTube, which if you don't know, I have a YouTube channel, please go subscribe, it helps. They put the box under videos with COVID in the title or description, and Google's a very left-leaning company and isn't always known for providing the truth. So when you click on the box, it takes you to a lot of actual misinformation, even though they say the box is there to prevent such a thing from happening. If you want actual data, listen to my podcast, not the box below it, or find other conservative websites that use the actual data, not just the mumbles out of the president. Now let's get to the two parties. Before we go any further into the big two parties, let's take a brief look into the third parties. And third parties are smaller political parties within our United States that don't just share the huge values, big set of values that... Republican and Democratic parties have, they focus on one small thing and might have things in common with a Republican or Democratic party, but they just want to focus on one big thing. So, for example, there are parties like the Libertarians, the Green Party, the Reform Party, the Constitution Party, and the Natural Law Party. All of these parties have their own different values. For example, the Green Party focuses mainly on conserving the environment, think green, recycling, team trees, all that jazz. You like jazz? The Libertarians want much less power for the government and more free will of the people. Think Libertarian, Liberty, the names of these parties give away a lot. The Constitution Party wants a very strict following of the Constitution. I know that's a shocker for y'all. The struggle for these parties and the reason that they don't usually do much in terms of running for office is that they are so small. Many of these parties could get away with running as a simple Democratic or Republican party. They share the general values of the party, like I said, but they go so much more specific that they have to break away and become a new party. Take the Green Party, for example. The environment is a big priority of the Democratic Party, so they could just run as a Democrat, but they focus more on the environment. The problem is they focus so much on the environment, they have to take it to such an extreme that they have to separate as a different party. This means that they don't have the large amount of people behind the Democratic Party, so the Green Party becomes very small and the number of votes they get is very small because the two mainstream candidates are the Republican and Democratic candidates offered up that are typically, you can bet on one of them winning. Like I said at the very beginning of the video, we have an election year coming up. 2022 is not the year where we get to vote for the president, sadly, but we will vote for pretty much everything else. Every state will vote separately for who gets positions in office to represent them. This is what is known as a midterm year, because it's in between 2022 and, not 2022, 2020 and 2024. It's like mid in the middle. Yeah. We'll vote for everyone in the House of Representatives, many of the Senate seats, and many elections will be held for positions of power in the states themselves, like the governor, but that's up to the state. Some state elections for governor were held previously, some will be held in 2024, it's up to the state when it happens. This upcoming election year in 2022 is going to be a very interesting thing to look forward to, considering how drastically the tides have changed since the election in 2020. Biden's approval ratings have plummeted into the 30s, and people around the country are saying that they are tired of Democrats running the country. The recent election held for the governor of Virginia, which has been a very blue state in the past, turned up a Republican governor. In New Jersey, a top Democrat in the state was blown out of their seat as governor to a random truck driver who spent less than $200 on their campaign. If you don't know, you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on your campaign for ads, all those YouTube ads you get when the election comes up. I know they're annoying. There was one about Kamala Harris laughing like a witch. That That's a campaign ad, if you remember that. But also, the $200, about $60 were spent on Dunkin' Donuts for his team. So he spent so much on his campaign, guys. It's insane. Us Republicans are hoping for a shift. All of these changes are mostly because of people realizing how crazy the newest policies are. 
I plan to cover a lot of these policies in upcoming videos throughout the year, so please do not forget to subscribe or follow wherever you are listening, whether on YouTube or a podcast flat platforms, you certainly do not miss out on any of these upcoming videos. You will almost definitely be affected by them in some way, so it's important to know about them. In other news, as the state's candidates start coming up, I have big plans to create resources for you to research every state and who's running for what, as well as what they believe in. Whether that be more videos, possibly a website, also maybe an app that I'm trying in the works. I'm considering all the options, so that's just another reason to subscribe so you do not miss the announcement of how to find these resources. And now finally onto the main topic today, the two big parties in the United States. The Republican and Democratic parties in the United States have been around essentially since the beginning of the country, but they went by different names. There was actually the Democratic Republican Party. They were almost one, but that's just their names because we live in Democratic Republic or Constitutional Republic. It's a whole thing. The separate parties still had different values, though, and that's really what defines a party. There were different names for the different parties, but there was still Democratic and Republic Republican parties in the sense that they believed in similar things. And I'm going to go into more of the, these values later, and it's easier to define them by calling them traditional and modern values. For those of you my age, and around seventh grade, you're probably going to recognize what I'm about to go into. If you don't, you're welcome for the head start into your 1920s history unit. A couple hundred years ago, back at the start of the Democratic and Republican parties, the party's values were the opposite of what they were today. So the Democratic Party believed what the Republican Party believes today, and vice versa. This is because their values gradually changed. They were both here, and they, their values switched so much that they just switched complete sides and they had switched their party names. What were their values? That requires a look into traditional and modern. The two most contrasting sets of values are known as traditionalist and modern values. The traditional values are typically the values of modern-day Republicans. They are conservatives, because conservative is the term for values, and Republicans is the term for the party. Sometimes they switch a little bit. They believe in the values of family, that a family should be in charge of raising their children, and, th and that the bond between family members is a powerful thing. They, or should I say we, also believe that religion should be followed in pretty much all aspects of life to figure out what actions to take. These values are more traditional. They've been around for a long time. This is why Republicans are also known as conservatives, but... Like I said, conservative is the type of value. Conservative is generally another word for traditional. While Republicans are the party, they usually have traditionalist and conservative values under them, but sometimes it switches. They believe in conserving, conserving traditional values. We look at the past to determine how to deal with the present and the future. This is in direct contrast to modern values. Modern values are typically endorsed by Democrats, which is why they're also known as radicals or liberals. Radical is just a word for completely new, different, kind of almost like crazy new, so new it's absurd. In fact, synonyms of the word radical include revolutionary, progressive, or reformer. Radicals typically make up new values as they go. They're not a thing that's happened in the past. They're something that they decide on for the future. Their values cause significant change when put into place. Nowadays, not always great change. They go away from the traditional values or family values or religious values. This is why you will often see liberals doing things that go against religion, like focusing a lot more on what science says about the creation of the world than religion. Now, these values make up our two main political parties. Republicans, also known as conservatives, typically endorse the traditionalist values we talked about. But sometimes Republicans, who people call squishes, kind of just go along and squish into the modern values of the left. Democrats, or liberals and radicals, typically endorse the values of modernity, or modern. Again, the values of a party define the party. Conservatives are represented by the color red, and liberals the color blue for future reference in the upcoming election. I know, that'll be something very important when you look at maps and everything. Back to the 1920s history lesson that I wanted to give. These sets of values have been in contrast for a very long time, even longer than the 20s, but it's a good example I have, so I'm going to roll with it. Let's take a look at a famous trial from the 20s known as the Scopes Trial. And, I mean, this thing actually happened. I took notes on it. We watched videos about it. It took notes in this notebook. It's actually a thing. An act in the 1920s, the Butler Act... Do you want to talk about how you're feeling right now? ...made it illegal to teach the theory of evolution in schools. Instead, the theory of creation, that God created everything, was the only thing allowed. This was a very traditionalist move. You can see that because the act prioritized the teaching of God or religion. 
I think that this is a great idea personally, but the government definitely does not have the authority to do this. So a teacher, John Scopes, deliberately taught the theory of evolution. He was clearly a modernist, or a democrat in modern terms. That's just to show you how these values conflict, so you can look out at out for it in these coming elections. Well, that's the end of that brief, almost history lesson. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the huge amount of content coming up about the election in 2022. Make the most of these last few days of your winter break. Go enjoy your New Year's.